Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. In life, we have the opportunity to start our lives over again. My next guest is an award-winning actress who has started her career at an age when people say, give up. It is Catherine Carlin. Join me. I'll be right back. Welcome to the show, my beloved Catherine Carlin. <laughs> I'm so proud of you for just being you. Oh, well, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> you know, we have such history. Yes. Uh, when I first met you, and people should know that everybody in Hollywood sort of closed the door on you and said, <laughs> you're too old, give up. We don't have an agent for you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Do something else. This is this kind of interview I can see now. <laughs> okay. And that made you feel... <laughs> Like, <laughs> bad word. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? I have been doing this for a very long time. And I thought, I don't think they can tell me I can't do this anymore. I had taken a break to raise my daughter. And, um, and then I raised her till she was 30. No, I'm kidding. And I, I just took a break. And then I came back. And I thought it would be an easy wall sin. <laughs> you know, like, oh, she's back. You know, I did Night Court, and Married with Children, all these shows. I thought, oh, they'll just take my hand and go, oh, Catherine, thank you so much for coming back. It was more like, uh, who are you? <laughs> yeah, like, who are you? What do you want? So it was uh, It was really us working together. Correct. You know. And I remember I met you at that director's party. That's right. And I knew you were a diamond in the rough. Oh, Gary. <laughs> and uh, people Sweetie. should know that you are a lifetime member of the Actors Studio, which is... That is not a small, let's say, um, award accomplishment. or accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the... Uh, the the actor studio has been around for a very long time. It's a members only kind of group and uh, you have to audition to get in. And I I am very honored to be a lifetime member of the actor studio and Mark Rydell and Marty Landau and many others were my mentors. And um, I've learned everything from them, honestly. But before that I had Uta Hagen and um, Susan Batson, and I had a lot of great teachers, and so I'm a very studied, trained actor, and um, I just wanted to come back you know? <laughs> from the 80s. I wanted to like say, oh, I'm back, and it was not so easy, um, and I think our work together with the yes frequency in saying yes, 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 really helped me move into a positive way to think about the business and not take the rejection to heart where I would, you know, pull well, the yeah, covers every, over my head. Every interview or audition was a no, but you have to know that when you do this work, it's it, it's, it supersedes any negative energy. Because I remember you used to go up for auditions and you'd say, oh my God, there's all these famous people in the room. Why That's am right. I here? Exactly. And I said, go back into the car and say a thousand yeses or a hundred yeses and you're just as good as Meryl Streep. And you that was hard. That was hard to believe. But yes. And you went in and booked the job. It was NCSI. That's right. That's right. I remember. And that was a great guest star role on that show. I had so much fun. And, and uh, LL Cool J just like, oh, my God, who are you? Oh, he was so wonderful, Gary. He was so he was like us. He was very positive thinker. He said, you know, I said, oh. LL Cool J, <laughs> I don't say his whole name. I didn't know him, you know. I say, I'm really nervous. I don't know. He said, Oh, don't be nervous. Just go do your thing, honey. Do your thing. You got this. You got this. And I was like, Really? He said, Yeah, just go out there and do it. And I just went out there and did it. He would. He was just cheering me on from the sideline. But if we hadn't done that work, if we hadn't prepared me to get to that place. I don't think I could have done it. I think I would have gotten too scared. I, you know, I think fear has run run the, like a thread through me my whole life. And I think that's what we've been working on is to get rid of the fear. Well, when you get rid of the fear and you start to overcome whatever challenge is for you, you start working with Amy Adams, you know, <laughs> five, six episodes of mm -hmm. a series, Viola Davis, Laura Dern, Rose Byrne, yeah. Tiffany Haddish, Selma yeah. Hayek, and even uh, the upcoming film with Diane Keaton. Yeah. And Renee Zellweger <laughs> in the yeah. upcoming NBC new limited series. You're doing 
three out of six. It's a limited series, yeah. and it's called the um, uh, Betsy Fryer right, story. Right, it's the thing the about Pam. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's very, it's a very interesting thing. There was a podcast that's still out there, this podcast from NBC, that you can listen to to get the story of what this is. But it's, um, it's a fascinating story about this woman. And, um, oh, I can't sit, wait to see right. what Renee's going to do with it because I, I'm a huge fan of her. So that's going to be so fun. And I go to New Orleans pretty soon, probably in about a week. And you also have the live stream of uh, Dune Patrol. Yes, that's a great show, Dune Patrol. If you haven't seen Dune Patrol, I don't know. At first I thought, oh, I don't know if this is for everyone. But you know what? It really is. It's a really well done show. And it's really fun. It's on HBO Max. So we are doing um, the third season of that right now. And it's streaming. So the one and two and three are streaming. And I, I did several. I did like five episodes in the third season. And I love it. I play Dr. Harrison. But you won't recognize me unless you really look for the dark wig with the gray stripe, you know. It's very Cruella de Vil. It's very Cruella, that look. <laughs> I love that look. I actually did that look in Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town. Oh, that's One of my really early funny. movies in the 80s. And I, I wrote a... Uh, oh, there she uh, is. Oh, yeah, there she is. Uh, you know, it, it was a really fun role to kind of find yourself dropping into some other character that you aren't normally in real life. I mean, it's fun to play yourself, you know, but just really fun. Um, I consider myself a character actress. Absolutely, because every role is so different yeah. and it's so real mm -hmm. and authentic. Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about what you do, but I think the confidence elevates the work. It does. And, and if you don't have the confidence, you can't really do the work. Right, right. You know, I, well, first of all, you're not going to get hired because they don't want anybody that doesn't have confidence. You have to feel confident about what you do. And I've always felt that about my work, like at the actor's studio and in plays and different little off-Broadway things. But when you have all those producers, all that money on the line for shows, you really got to step up your game. And you've got to have that feeling inside. And that's the work that we did. What was the, um, and I can't remember, it was an episode in the very beginning when you started booking these mm -hmm. shows, and you were on set, and you played a senator, and oh, you wanted scandal. them. And, scandal. Oh, scandal. And you wanted them to write more because you had such a small part. Yes. And then the director comes to you with like three pages of dialogue <laughs> yes. to learn. Yes, it was really something, wasn't it? I mean, I had to be up there as a senator introducing our next president, you know, whatever it was. And it was like this long pages of dialogue. I was like, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> you will you know? get it. You will get it. Exactly. You know, if you, if you really know what it is you want, and I think that's what we've worked on, having the goal, knowing what you want, what you're setting your intention. Correct. You know, when you set your intention, it's not only just saying it, it's also believing it mm -hmm. and actually switching your subconscious to let that become yes. Yes. That's the hard part. I think the, also the hard part is feeling it. Yes. Don't you agree? I mean, yes. it's like I can tell myself one thing, but to really feel it, like that's really happening, to feel yourself on the set, see yourself. We've talked about that. You've told right. me, put myself there, really see what's happening and um, see that that experience that you want to happen. Oh, this is kind of funny. I was just thinking that when it goes like one, one, one on the clock oh, right. or one, 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 one on the clock, I always stop whatever I'm doing, and I take a deep breath and I see myself wherever I want to be. Correct. And it really, it, it, I think it works. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Well, it's sort of setting the intent of, you know, because if, if everything is energy and we're mm -hmm. in this universe, everything is divine timing. So when you have the timing to set that intention for your goal, you're letting the energy, but the secret sauce is the emotional feeling. Yes. That's, that's the, secret. the secret. That's the secret. And you know, that's the secret in acting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have to do some kind of emotional role, even happy, sad, you know, it doesn't mean anger or whatever it is, you're drawing on some kind of real emotion. It's like, well, at least that's how I work, that I come from a real place. Like I might even remember a time when I was really upset about something or really sad and use something. So I'm doing that same kind of work. 
So it, it just made no, you know, it was a no brainer to kind of do it with what you were talking about. Correct. So I kind of knew how I'd have to really feel it. Uh, but sometimes it's, it's not always so easy. It's, you know, it's not, it's, you know, I think I have a tendency to write a negative script as opposed to a positive script. You know, like, oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, that, in our business, we do something, they, they call it a pin. They pin you. It's very painful. No, they actually, you know, I, I always think of it as like they put your picture on the wall with a little pin. But that's how they start before they book you. So they first they pin you and then they give you an offer. And a lot of times the pins will fall out. It's just they're released and then you don't get the part and someone else got it or something. But lately I have been, and it's really because of this manager I have too, besides the work we've been doing, this gal, Angie, she said to me at Entertainment Lab, I love her. I said, oh, you know, Angie, they have a pin in me for this. I'm sure it's going to drop out. You know how pins are. Blah, 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 blah. She said, whoa, stop right there. And I thought, uh oh, it's like I'm Gary must have called her because all of a sudden she says, the pin's not going to be released. You tell the universe the pin's going to be released and it will be released. And I went, oh. And then it was like, I think that that whole thing of me for me is that I protect myself. Correct. Like I'm just. Disappointment. I don't want that disappointment. So I'll just go ahead and let it not really happen you know so i'll just tell myself it's not really going to happen then i won't be disappointed guess what i'm telling the universe to make that not happen correct and it's not happening anymore and so when she said that this was just a few days ago i went okay i'm just going to turn what would it be like if i turn my mind around correct and just say okay you know what the pin's not going to be released correct it's going to be a fantastic job uh, da, 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 da. and i went through this whole thing and it wasn't released now is that just odd or god i don't know exactly you know i'm not sure but it worked so i just know that that kind of thinking and honestly just like you do all the time when someone does something that i can see very clearly that they're going in a negative direction i'll say no wait a minute think about that what if it was positive what if it was going to feel good what if it what if it is going to happen what if that guy you're with is going to be the one i mean how does that well, feel? I, I think the, uh, the as human nature, they some we sometimes well, if it doesn't work out, I I guess it'll be okay. But this yeah. way, I don't have to feel bad. Instead of saying, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I have no judgment. I have no expectation, and then it's a surprise. Yeah, I think so, and I I think that I come from a place. Well, I was born in Cookville, Tennessee. And my daddy was the most fabulous man in the world, but he so didn't want me to ever get my feelings hurt. So he was always like, oh, don't get too excited about that. You know, don't count on that too much. So it's an old tape in my mm -hmm. head that is telling me, uh-uh, don't do that. So that it keeps me kind of safe. detached Correct. and safe mm -hmm. so that I won't be hurt. Yeah. But you get hurt anyway. So Right. Growing up in Cookville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. as a little girl, did you say, I want to do that? Or was it just a sense of, I saw some movies and thought I could act? Or how, I know you moved to New York. Actually, you were a school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your I life a is life. a movie. <laughs> My life is a <laughs> lifetime movie. Maybe a Hallmark. But, um, you know, here's what really happened. In Cookville, Tennessee, I was a little school teacher from the time I came out. I had like the little chalkboard and I would get all the kids in the neighborhood to come over and then I would tell them what we're gonna do and I was very bossy and I would say, okay, you're gonna be a mouse fairy and you're gonna be a flying fairy and I'm the queen. And then, you know, and I just told them all and we would play. So I was always kind of teaching and instructing and then I went off to, life happened and then I, ended up in college and I majored in special education. Special education, interesting. interesting. Um, and I taught people how to swim that were physically handicapped and everything. It was really an interesting time for me. I never wanted to be an actress. And so what happened is I was on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa and this man came up to me and he said, you know, uh, Burt Reynolds is making a movie. This is really gonna date me. It's gonna make me 100. Uh, Deliverance. And, um, you know, you would be very good in that movie. I'm sure it's like this <laughs> naked scene by the lake or something, you know? And I'm like, oh, I, I'm not an actress. I'm a school teacher. And he said, well, you should be. So 
I let that go. I didn't care. I didn't wasn't interested. Then I ended up in New York as a model. I, I modeled for Giorgio San Angelo. And I was a runway model with Janice Dickinson and all of them. They always said I was short and fat. But really, I was like so skinny. I must have weighed, I don't know, I was probably like a size two. They were all zero, so I was fat to them. And uh, they were all probably 6'4". I was like, you know, 5'8". But he always made me the um, finale of the show or whatever it was. And he said, you should be an actress. And I thought, oh, dear, it's coming up again. <laughs> you know, and then he said, why don't you study acting? He told me about HB Studio. and the... Anyway, I was married at the time, and that man did not want me to be an actress because he said that if you make it, you'll leave me. And if you don't make it, I'll have to hear about it for the rest of my life. And so I thought, hmm, I think I'm going to go try. So <laughs> I did, and I really fell in love with it. And then it became something I studied like I was a, being a brain surgeon or something. And I couldn't stop. And I've never been able to stop until I gave birth to my beautiful daughter, Carlin. And um, she's incredible. And I just wanted to spend all my time with her, so I took that break. Mm. I took a 10-year break. Correct. And then I came back, and that's when... We really hooked up, and that you really helped me. I don't, I don't think I would be where I am today without you. What was Love your? You. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. What was your biggest challenge that you had to overcome? Fear. Fear. I think it's fear. Um, you know, w which fear is a, a big word. You know, insecurity. Um, you know, not thinking I'm good enough. Not, you know, they're better than I am, you know, you know self-doubt, you know, all of those kind of feelings. They, they're they huge, you know, um, thinking I don't meet up to those expectations that are going to be expected of me. So it makes me, you know, it, 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 was, it was a battle, actually, my whole life. It's been a battle. I don't have it right now. I feel very comfortable in my own skin. Mm. I feel qualified. I feel confident. I, you know, but it took a long time. <laughs> well, I think, you know, being courageous and being in gratitude and however long it takes, it doesn't matter. The thing is yeah. that all of that is a life lesson that brought you to where you are today. So it really yes. doesn't matter how old you are when, when it clicks. It's just your, your path that you yeah. have to experience now and enjoy it. Yes. Enjoy it. Yes, enjoy it. Enjoy the path. Once you get on it, enjoy it. And, you know, I, I'm i excited. So I'm, you know, I have a lot of energy. I know I do. And I've always had it. And I am 68 years old. And I just turned 68 in July. And I feel like maybe I'm 30. I don't know. Around 30-ish is what I really feel like. And, you know, I take really good care of myself to make sure that happens. You know, I do a lot of walking. I count my steps every day. I eat healthy food, you know. I'm right, you have done all these great healthy food, the sweet potato diet. Sweet potato, done all of those <laughs> yummy foods. I like really found out that if you don't take care of yourself, then it's too bad because then you're gonna go into this next phase. Correct. Because now I get to play the grandma and I get to play, you know, all these wonderful roles that are wonderful character roles. Um, and I need to be, have stamina you can't be on a set you're it's hard work Correct. what we do it's like it is hard it's hours 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 preparation of work. Mm -hmm. reading mm -hmm. studying learning mm -hmm. learning i mean i don't know how you memorize all those lines well you just do you say them over and over and over anthony hopkins said you say them 150 times till they just to become part of you it's like saying your name i'm katherine carlin they get it oh and i have to have the lines be like that so you're saying them over and over and over and over again but when you're on a set you're up and down up and down up and down you're walking over here and on doom patrol i'm, I'm acting with mostly 30 year olds you know what i'm saying and they're in 20s and 30s and you know here i am dr harrison she's going to come out and do her thing and i mean you know it's a wild show i can't wait for you guys to look at it because it's I have to have my stamina. I have to have my strength to do those things. And that's just not only physical, but mentally, emotionally, correct. mentally. And, and, and what you just said about rehearsing 150 times over and over, people always ask me, well, why do you make us say these affirmations? Yes. Because you're doing the same thing. You're putting all of those words, today I am powerful and confident and healthy. You're putting that into yes. your system. So after 100 times, 
it goes into your subconscious and your body and your cells start to activate that thought. Yes, because your body doesn't know the difference. Correct. It doesn't know the difference. You know, um, I've taught acting and I have taught in many places at the uh, – I've gone and traveled internationally and taught. I'm a private acting coach. That's all on my website if you want to hook up with me. But when, uh, one of the things about it is is that you have to have inside of you the belief that you really are that person. So just like your affirmations, if you're saying those lines over and over and over again, you're becoming that person. And that those affirmations make you that person. You become that person. You change from being a negative person to a positive person. I know you and I've talked about it. When you go on internationally and teach all this, some people in some countries, it's harder than other countries Correct. to shift them. Correct. And, and I believe as an actor or just a human being having an experience that actually when you say the words that you are open to receive great opportunity – that also has to open the part of your emotional mindset that you cannot be blocked. Yes. You have to be able to be in touch with who you are and be able to share who you are. And not necessarily do you share with everyone, but you share with a circle that they go, oh, I know who he is or who she is. Yes. You know, and I think you lose a lot of people along the way. Yeah. I will say that. I will say that, you know, I can see a difference of what I'm attracted to and what I'm not attracted to Correct. now. Um, and people that are not attracted to me anymore in my positive state, they would rather for me to be kind of down, you know? Correct. And it's interesting, as you shift your consciousness within, the type of people or events or situations goes away. So mm. that those people that you had yeah. a lot of drama, yes. you had a lot yes. of chaos for the last eight years. As you shift your consciousness, what happens is the type of people you attract changes. That yeah. means no more drama. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I used to attract drama all the time. Really? Yes. <laughs> and after when I wrote the first book, I said no more. And I started to look at the awareness of mm. those people do not serve me and not that i was making a judgment that i was better than them but i just said i can't have that in my life it's too much chaos yeah. mm -hmm. and it's put me on hold so i can never reach my goals because yeah. i'm juggling ten well yeah balls. because you're stopping and you're gonna you're dealing with that you can't keep on the flow you know what i mean there is something about being on the flow of something it stops you you have to talk to them you have to <laughs> deal with the drama you know yeah. So when you and that's why they say it's called mind, body, spirit. Yes. Everything has to be in balance or it does not work. Yeah. Does not that's work. Right. Um, the um, uh, situation of when you go on tour, or not on tour, on, on set or uh, mm -hmm. work. Location. And I know that yeah. in location, you you know, it's a little stressful to fly across the country and then set up shop in some hotel. Yeah, and I think that you can, you can look at it as stressful or you can look at it as exciting. Correct. I mean, it really is that way, right? Correct. You, you could be like really scared or really excited. You know what I mean? I mean, it's – so I always try. I'm working on it, and it's getting better that uh, the stress level goes down mm -hmm. when I think, oh, it's going to be good, as opposed to, oh, my God, what's going to happen? You know, will I get the car? I mean, the airport, and, and then I have to have the hotel, and then what about the hotel? And, and then what about how am I going to get to the set? Now, now we have COVID. We have COVID tests every minute, COVID, COVID, COVID. You know what I mean? I can go into that mindset, or I Correct. can go, oh, it's going to be lovely. It's going to work out beautifully. Correct. It's going to be smooth. It's going to have – and that's doing this work we're talking Correct. about. Correct, because you're setting – you're, you're – you're, uh, putting the red carpet out before yes. you walk on the red carpet. Yes, And yes. so everything has already been laid out, and all you have to do is walk as if. Exactly. You know? And, it, and that is not easy. You can tell your brain that. You can tell your mind that. But you have to really feel that inside. And, you know, there's a lot of affirmations you've told me, and there's a lot of yes work you can do. I don't know if everybody knows about that book. Oh, the, the yes frequency, yeah. yes. That's well, I try to, I think what's important is that people 
um, you can start small just yeah. by changing the awareness of, you know, listing of what's your important goals that you want to mm -hmm. create. But then is everything that you speak, that you feel, and that you, let's say, energy, uh, action-wise, body-wise, match that script? Yes. It's almost like what, what movie do you want to create in your life? Exactly. Do you want it to be a drama, a horror, <laughs> a love story? <laughs> right. Or the adventure. Adventure. Yeah, there's an adventure movie. And so you write your own script and you speak it, you okay. think it, and you live it. And then you see the results if you're in harmony and you just stay persistent. Yeah. Well, I think you also said just then about how, you know, you start slow. You start with the slide. And I think you started me very slow. You know what I mean? You just kind of drop these ideas in my mind and then they kind of took gel and they would that would work and then I just kept going and going and going and if you keep going it can go to a very high level of yeah. happiness within without the outside changing correct. that much correct and I think a lot of people look for happening happiness outside of them yes. but they forgot that until you have true happiness and peace and joy and self-love within first yourself the outside isn't going to change. I know. Another thing, I was thinking what you just said a minute ago about what is it that um, that happened to me. I think I was a worrier. My mother was a worrier. You know, it was like always going to worry. Like, oh, I mean, simple things like going to the store, like, oh, they'll be out of potatoes. It's like, how are they going to be out of potatoes? They're going to have lots of potatoes. Oh, they're going to be out of this. Oh, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, just the worry, the worry, worry, worry. And I was, I mean, to take that out of your life it is such a new freedom and a new happiness. I'm telling you, that worry thing it's crazy. I was taught how to worry. I think I was. Mm, 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 mm. You know? Um, answer these one word questions. Okay. Uh, love is. Beautiful. God is. Love. I love to spend a Sunday morning doing. Oh, well, I guess that would be walking in the park with my fabulous husband. Heaven is right now that's it <laughs> right now right now i thank you so much no. i wish you all the best i know you're going to do even bigger greater things oh, thank you, in Gary. the upcoming months years and i can't wait to see you in your emmy award-winning roles academy award-winning roles thank you and all above thank you gary i love you love you too <laughs> I'm Gary Quinn. Join me for another episode of Ready, Set, Live. Until next time, be well.